and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back for the first time in, I think, two and a half months to another episode of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We have the whole crew back. We are here for another episode. And it's very ironic, you know, how much things can change in just a short amount of time. When you guys really consider the last time that we were recording, there were uh, a bunch of soon-to-be NXT stars who filled up the arena. Now we have the pleasure of watching WWE programming every single week right there at the WWE Silverdome. Thunderdome. I'm sorry, brothers. It is the, it is the Thunderdome. <laughs> or Stadium. Or Sky Dome. The place where you will find Kenny at what? <laughs> Kenny Omega. <laughs> let, me, let, me just, let me just tell you guys who you can find in the crowd. You can find uh, Fire Velveteen Dream. You can find Stevie Richards in the crowd. And, of course, Kenny Omega. Well, more importantly, you can always find and catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only $9.99. Wait, $9.99? I kid you not, it is not $10. Not $1,000. Not one million dollars. But just only... Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Or, or, this does have to be mentioned. If you are unable to afford all the full exclusive content for that price, be sure to catch the WWE Network also for free. Not the same content, but still most of it. We are here to review WWE Payback two thousand and twenty. Sounded very promising. Not really. But I wish I uh, wish relax the over was there. Good. Relax over there, Xavier. WWE. <laughs> hey, you got to put some emphasis on it. You know what I'm saying? I just wish the network could pay me back my time because my god. Oh. Well, hopefully in the middle of summer they don't slam you for your money with bad content. Get it? I mean, are we seeing the return of Summerfest? Uh, oh, Jeremy Piven, what are we going to do with you? Uh, never invite him back. Anyway, so let, let's quit talking in circles and let's uh, get right back to it. Don't you mean squared circles? <laughs> you get anyway, it because the ring uh, is like a square, but you can kind of see a circle if you draw it in a diameter. Anyway. Okay, that's... Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna. I'm, I'll be the match breakdown guy, I guess. Okay. You ready? Yes, I'm sure. ready. All right. So first off, kickoff show match. We got the one, the only, the Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan defeating the Iconics in a nine-minute kickoff show match. I didn't watch this one. I didn't either. I will. I will, but I haven't. <laughs> I mean, you could watch it on Raw unless they're broken. Uh oh. Uh, Here we go. How many Great. times have they faced off already? Like three, five, seven? I don't know, a handful, but it sounds like the Iconics are wrapping up or splitting up because I know there was talk that Peyton was going to get a push. Is that what it is? Because I thought maybe Peyton was slowly going to AEW. I mean, it's possible, but I, I think that, uh, I thought I had heard that Vince was high on her, and so they were going to try and push her, probably to keep her from going to be with Sean. Well, Vince is high, but, um, I don't uh, know. You know, with age, sometimes you develop glaucoma, you need that medicinal marijuana. I, I'm not to, I'm not to <laughs> judge him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really watch this match. I kind of tapped out on this feud because... I think for a moment they were going with Ruby and Morgan splitting up again because they would run into that whole thing where one person would cost the other person a match unintentionally. But, um, yeah, I guess now Iconics are no more. 
and we'll see what Ruby and Morgan are doing. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Well, speaking of tapping things, uh, who would have tapped that Bobby Lashley would walk away with the United States Championship? Bobby. Wow. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, let the audience, I'll let the audience determine what I was insinuating from that yeah. segment. <laughs> well, let, I let's kind just of... Get, go ahead. Let's just get right into the match. Okay. <laughs> did, did we think he was going to win? I did. Did we happen to have a way to put a belt on him because the hurt business is in the uh, business to hurt people? Sure. Well, I will say this. I do like the idea of the Hurt Business. I feel like the adding of Shelton Benjamin was a little sudden and unneeded. But I guess if you're trying to do something with everybody on the roster, sure, go for it. He's a great talent. I just feel like Bobby Lashley, at this point in his career, should not be facing for the United States Championship. But instead, should be in the title picture or should be in a main event picture. A guy of his stature, I mean, the fact that we have yet to see Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley is just, it's, it's astonishing if you really think about it. But I do like the combo of him and MVP. I, I'm digging it. Now, something that, I, this is this is a wild, like a random pitch, and I doubt that, that that's the route they would go. But I think it would be, it would be interesting uh, for them to approach it this way, is if they... Uh, to establish this group, and I wouldn't even, if we're being entirely honest, I wouldn't even have a problem if we ultimately fit Cruz into this group somehow, given the theme, yeah. and uh, you get to a point where maybe Bobby is your front man, and the title picture opens up, and either he ultimately becomes a double champion, or he cha- says, I'm going to challenge for this, and he like pa- just passes the United States Championship down to a, a worthy contender such as Apollo Crews, who he had just beaten. Um, and you make this like a dominant, a, a fairly dominant uh, stable. I wouldn't have a problem with that, but that's, that's something that I would do if I were in charge of creative. <laughs> I dig it. So what you're doing there is you're pitching a good idea. They're not in the business for good ideas. If I They're could in the just, business of hurt. If I could just throw this in there very subtly, um, I will go on record to say that I think the company is at a all new low point when it comes to creative and booking. Like, I think we've, ta- we've tanked a whole lot, like, before this pandemic, all the way up to now. Like, it's been very poor. Like, when you really think about it, you got a lot of things that are just hanging in the background. I can guarantee you right now, they got no plan for Otis, who's the who's your Money in the Bank winner, by the way. He doesn't even carry the briefcase anymore. What is it, a Lunchable Lunchbox? Sure. Anyway, that was my little side tangent. And he's, got, he's got the salami in the Lunchbox. <laughs> Disturbing. Did you guys hear what Bailey said? Uh, I don't remember, but yes, I heard, I heard it. I don't remember what it was. Well, it had to do with meat. So Bobby Lashley wins uh, after making Apollo Crews tap out to the full Nelson. So there's the other side of the segue. Um, and uh, walks out your new champion. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so speaking of... Um, Champions, uh, we have uh, the former uh, WWE NXT champion at Big E facing former whatever titles he's held, Sheamus. I will say this it is about damn time that Big E gets his due. However, I use this same analogy with Kofi Kingston, I'm going to use it with Big E. The problem is that Big E is not getting pushed. The New Day's version of Big E is getting pushed. And I don't know if you guys saw that segment with Miz. I think that was kind of blurring the lines of like, hey man, if you want to be serious, if you really want them to pay attention to you, you got to drop this jiving and laughing and 
this uh, hokey pokey happy go lucky thing that you got going on. You got to tune it back to three is not enough. I need five big E. So that's just my opinion. I I think it was a great match. They're certainly building up momentum for the guy. I just hope that they they continue and execute it the right way. But I don't want to see New Day's Big E get the push. I want to see Big E get the push. Are, are, are you asking for Big E Livingston? Big like, E Langston. You mean, you mean Langston? Langston, Livingston, whatever. I'm, I'm tired. Okay, all of the above. How's that? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I would like to see Big E get the push he deserves. I would like Creative to decide, hey... Let's give him a push he needs. Not not towards like an intercontinental title, not towards the US title, but well, he's on SmackDown, right? Yeah. At least eventually head into the direction of the Universal title. At one point. Not now. Not immediately. Like have him build up like this mean dominant force of just kicking people's ass and none of this like well, I'm the underdog of the New Day again. It's like we've seen the story, man. Don't need to see it again. Yeah, I don't know if you guys caught the end of the match where he goes up to Corey, and I'm paraphrasing, but he says, if you didn't feel that, then you don't feel me. And Corey Graves, I'm paraphrasing, he goes, I just looked in that man's eyes, there's no doubt in his eyes. And I'm like, yeah, you feel that. You feel those moments. I felt that too, like when he was huffing and puffing and he's sweating all over the place, but... What, everything he's saying, you can tell he believes, and I'm like, that's the Big E that needs to get that needs to get pushed, not the New Day shucking and jiving and doing snow angels in the ring, Big E. Yes. So here's hoping that that Big E uh, focuses up, and we get to we get to see a resurgence of the the man, the myth, the legend. Uh... But, uh, yeah, Biggie picks up the win with the big ending. Speaking of ending, let's uh, move on to Matt Riddle versus... Uh, I didn't watch the because... match. I skipped it. I don't care for these two. Moving on. Jesus. Okay. Well, that was abrupt. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, Matt Riddle is... I, he's okay, I guess. He's, I haven't watched a lot of his stuff. I, uh, From my understanding, he, he's talented but this whole bro pothead rbd like kind of thing going on um, it doesn't work for him it's annoying which i'll get into more annoying stuff later on but uh <laughs> I, don't, I don't even see on here who won it was riddle right was it yeah riddle won uh bro seth won bro ham hashtag jackhammer yeah, so he, so Matt Riddle wins. Uh, Kamish, you got any thoughts? I I don't like the attitude that like he. It's like he brought that persona from NXT to SmackDown, and Vince is okay with it. In my mind, it's like I, I'm not I'm not vibing with it. it. It worked there. It's not going to work on the main roster. This is the reason why you didn't get put on Raw. If we're being honest. He, he was supposed to go to Monday Night Raw, but obviously he pissed off the wrong person, Paul Heyman and uh, Brock Lesnar. So he ended up on SmackDown. My my big concern is that we'll get another Vince McMahon N word type of moment with this guy because of his quirky ass attitude. Mm. Please no. God no. <laughs> I I don't think anything like well. What, what is it? Ne- ne- never say never, or anything can happen in the WWE. Yeah, well, it's both. But Vince's expression is never say never. That's too bad. Um. Anyway, we got on that match. Sure. Yeah, I don't care for it. You can keep going. Perfect. Because speaking of the annoying things, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> won the tag team championship from the role models. Um, Sh- Shayna Baszler. Yes, I still I still love Shayna. Um, especially when she put uh, what what were the two moves? In, in, was it an Indian Deathlock and uh, half Indian and, uh, Deathlock and the, and the um, I was gonna say Kokina, the Carafuta Clutch. Yeah. 
She locks them both in. That whole last moment, like that whole last minute and a half, I was curious how, what they were working toward. And I saw her start to put uh, Sasha in the, the the leg hold, and I went, ooh, they're going to have her put them both in submissions. Yeah, I figured it out, too. And then it, and then it got better, because <laughs> she choked Bailey out with Sasha's own arm. <laughs> Best submission ever. Oh. But the negative of the whole the whole thing Here we go. is that once once Nia Jax was holding her championship, what in the blue hell was she doing? Yeah. Yeah. I was making noises, getting in the camera's face. Mm, I apologize, but bitch, sit down. <laughs> Whoa, be humble. Well. <laughs> um, I will say this, probably my favorite match of the whole night, Shayna looking absolutely awesome. I think that ending was unique. It was new. It was a breath of fresh air, so to speak. It, it shows the talent that she has. Honestly, look, I've said it before. When it comes to the four horsewomen of MMA, she's, she's the brew powerhouse. She's 100%. the one. That's supposed to be, I, I'm here to kick ass. I'm not here to do promos, but unfortunately I have to. And the other two are apparently now on a Raw Underground. <laughs> but, um, I, yeah, well. <laughs> I think that, like I thought about this, I'm like, if you can build this up correctly, I wouldn't mind if Shayna and Nia go on this long streak of dominating every single tag team. And then by the time WrestleMania comes around, you can have the both of them face off in a one-on-one match. Because that, that's the WrestleMania match right there. You can't throw that away at a stomping grounds or a clash of champions type of thing. And yes, you guys are right. I think what they're doing with Nia, I've said it for a long time. She needs to be quiet and stoic and you know strong, silent type. But for whatever reason, time after time... They have her open her mouth and uh, just act like a little kid. And you can tell Shayna is just kind of like, all right, I kind of got to go along with this type of thing. But I don't know. It, it seems a little bit promising for what it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. But I think if you can build it all the way up until Mania, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, my concern is is that they're gonna they're gonna go about this with a with like a Balkan skull approach. If the best uh, of you guys, and my concern is that Nia is going to be the skull to Shayna's bulk. I see. Possibly, seems like it. But eventually, this is going to boil down, and we're going to find out who the snake in the grass is. And while we're talking about snakes, Here Keith go. Lee versus Randy Orton. Keith Lee picking up the uh, victory off a brutal-looking power bomb. Spirit bomb. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Thoughts? <laughs> I, I think Randy's doing his job. He, he's giving Lee the push. Because they're trying to build uh, um, Keith Lee the same way he was on SmackDown, except for some reason Vince has a thing where he's okay with Otis not having a shirt on, but he's okay with Keith Lee... Wearing a shirt. I don't get it. I don't care. You're fat, you're fat. You're supposed to be a dominant brute force. And he kicked Randy Orton's ass pretty bad. Well, I mean, uh, the only thing I'll advocate for him, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, is I, wasn't he wearing a new shirt? I'm not I sure. Was so. he I, I, I thought it was a new design, so that might have been why they had him wear it, was to advertise it. Probably. But, uh... Because it's the same thing with Roman. Didn't Roman wrestle the... Didn't he wrestle the... Yes. Entire match? Yep. <laughs> I did quotations on that. We'll get back to that. Wearing his wreck everyone shirt. Yeah. Don't you mean the Stone Cold Steve Austin ripoff of Arrive Race Hell Leaf shirt? Oh, they they've, done that, they've, they've done that pattern time and time again, and apparently it sells. So... Well, they put the comparison on... Uh, VR Wrestling's Instagram, where you see Austin and Roman kind of wearing the shirts. 
I mean, I don't know if it's just because the guy's my favorite wrestler, but when I f- saw that shirt for the first time, I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm getting Austin vibes from that shirt. Final thoughts on Orin versus Lee. How do we feel about both guys right now? Um, um, I, I, I like Keith Lee. I don't have any problem with him being pushed. I think it is strange that they're pushing him at the expense of Randy Orton at the moment. But... I also read an article this morning, I think, that said Vince apparently is real high on him and wants to, quote-unquote, push him to the moon. So uh, I'm assuming that we'll see more Keith Lee and maybe Keith Lee. Oh, how pissed off do you think Lashley's going to be if Keith gets a match against Brock first? Well, see, that's that's what I mean. It's almost a crime that we haven't seen it yet. But in regards to the match, very sudden victory. I wasn't expecting that. I thought we were going to have like a 30-minute, you know, slow match until we finally build to a sudden ending. But, um, yeah, Kamish, like you said, Randy doing what he does, putting over the young talent. And uh, Keith Lee was still very much protected in the triple threat match on Monday, he didn't get pinned or anything, so it's obvious that they're protecting the guy. So maybe he is being pushed to the moon, which I don't mind because I his promos already stick out to me, sort of the sort of Jake Roberts esque, very calm, cool, collected, calculated type of promo. So uh, yeah, I'm digging it. So moving on, uh, I mean. Keith Lee pulls out the uh, victory with the spirit bomb just in the nick of time. But let's talk about Dominic and Rey Mysterio in their match against Seth Rollins and Murphy. It was good. Uh, Seth Murphy now? The, the, the puns aren't going to get better, guys. Uh, yeah, he's listed as just Murphy on here. Like, Robocop Murphy? Yep. <laughs> Oh, dear God. <laughs> Anywho, so Ray and Dominic pick up the win off of uh, Seth and Murphy after uh, Murphy catches uh, Seth with an ins- uh, not an insiguri per se, but he catches him with a kick to the head, yeah. knocking him out for the remainder of the match. And then Murphy gets caught with a 619 and a frog sp- splash from Papa Eddie. <laughs> La Familia. And uh, so, how do you guys? How are you guys feeling about first of all Dominic in general so far, but also the match as a whole? I think that he's doing very well. Uh, the guy has, from what I've seen, like even when he was taking those uh, beatings from Brock and whatever, he's very um, agile, very fast. <laughs> Uh, he would do these moments where he would hop over the barricade and he would run over from one side of the ring to the other. So, very agile. He's picked it up very well. Uh, I like what's going on uh, with Seth. Um, yeah, no, I don't got, I don't have too much of a problem with this. Uh, Seth is my guy. You guys know that. Uh, Dominic, I think he's getting a nice opportunity. Ray is doing everything that he can before his final contract expires with WWE, so I like it. I like the whole thing. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, with Dominic and how he's doing. Obviously, you know, you've grown up in a wrestling family, you know, you're expected to, to shoot for the moon for the family, but he's, he's getting a good stepping point with Seth. I think pairing them out together right now is the best step. As long as he keeps the momentum going, you know, who knows? I'm not saying he's going to, like, surpass all his father's accomplishments, but he's, he'll slowly get there. I will just add one thing in. One thing that I'm hoping doesn't happen is that we don't run into a Ric Flair and his daughter situation because already when you consider it's Dominic Mysterio, his finisher is the 619. There's, it's like, yeah, you can have a little bit of a tie-in, but don't make it a Flair and his daughter type of deal. Yeah, I mean, my, my take on it is, uh, from what I've seen, Dominic has, he's got a pretty good base for his skill set. Um, he seems, ad, like you said, agile. He seems to have pretty good technique. Um, I, I don't know 
long term how he's going to do, but I hope for the best. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a good group of guys for him to get his feet wet in, in the, the ring with because Seth, minus the couple of times he's caused people's injuries, is pretty clean most of the time. Yeah. Like, I would say, like, proportionally, based on how many matches a year Seth Seth wrestles versus some other people, even with the injuries he has been directly related to, it's pretty benign if you break it down, mo- like, monetarily. Yeah. Not monetarily, Jesus, numerically. <laughs> but uh, Murphy is a really clean guy most of the time, too, and then Ray, obviously, is Rey Mysterio. Um. Oh, I don't know where they go to, like, like, year or years. Yeah. But I I ultimately don't really know where they go from here, like, what the end game is on this feud, because now Ray and Dominic have won the, the, not even rubber match, per se. They won the third match in the sequence. Yeah. But does the story continue? Does Dominic ultimately side with Seth and Murphy for some reason? Does... I don't know. I don't know what happens. That would be interesting. But to see. we got to see a rematch of Braun Strowman and The Fiend, uh, essentially, with uh, special guest star Roman Reigns. Fair enough. <laughs> so the match ends. I don't even remember how the match ends. Uh, uh, the, I think it was what? The suplex off the top rope? Yes, so they, they do the they do the classic ring shatter spot, and after that happens, Reigns comes out, signs the contract at the top of the ramp with uh, Paul Heyman. Uh, he hits Wyatt with a low blow, hits Strowman with a chair, and then spears Strowman for the victory. Yeah. So this solidifies us into heel Reigns country, where Reigns is now the champion. And he's the bad guy. And from what I heard, we're going to be seeing a lot of babyface fiend now. Okay. Judging by the frustration, I guess I'll begin. Okay. <laughs> okay. What does the fiend mean to you guys when you first think of him? The best evil. What? I was going to say the best character to come down the pike in the last 15 years. And I think I went more in the direction you were going toward, which was evil. Okay. So those, those are the first few things you think of. Yes. When the hell do you mix in an evil character being a baby face? Fair enough. It makes no sense. Well, what well, makes sense nowadays? Man in charge of everything. Kamish, you saying that doesn't make sense. Tell me one thing in the WWE right now that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. Ah, see. Well, um, I mean, I'm curious where this goes because it sounds like we're going to be seeing Reigns and, and Fiend. I don't know if it's going to happen immediately or if that's going to be the long game. But, uh... I mean, do they ultimately use the fiend as the catalyst to turn Roman back into a face? Given the fact that that seems to be the trend with his character, is anybody who comes in contact with him suddenly switches? Well, I think that would be an interesting dynamic because it seems like up until this point, it's kind of been the reverse of that, where the the other person has been the good guy and they transform into the bad guy. So... Now we sort of have the opposite where you got a good guy gone bad and now it's almost the Fiend's job to turn him back into a good guy. Yeah. To, 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 to regain the balance. Yeah. Yeah, but do, do you guys really want a face Roman Reigns for now? Well, no. I don't have a problem with seeing where heel Roman Reigns goes. I just don't know where this goes. <laughs> well... Let me ask you guys this question. I have noticed that with the circumstance of everything going on right now, there has been a lot of things that they are doing where it's like 
you know, you could have done this when we had arenas full of thousands of people. You didn't do it then, but you're doing it now. And I feel like Roman Reigns' heel turn is, uh, is, is, a, is a scenario where we wanted it for years. And before there was a pandemic, you had arenas booing the guy and begging for a heel turn. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. And then finally, when you come to a point now where I feel like wrestling has lost a lot of momentum, especially WWE. Things are not as hyped up as they used to be for obvious reasons. Things don't stick out anymore for obvious reasons. And it's like, in the brunt of all of that, you choose now to turn Roman heel. And I just, I don't understand that, you know? Yeah. It's in regards to what the, the writing process is and what the overall story is. But whoever came up with the idea, I mean... They kind of have to thank the pandemic for it, but at the same time, it's like, mm, you choose now to, to give us this? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm okay with it. What? We could have had this years ago? Exactly. Maybe. Would have been great. I would have preferred Roman Reigns to be a heel this whole goddamn time. Just say. Yeah, live reaction as opposed to pre-recorded audience noises. In the Silver Dome. Well, I mean, like you said, they can thank the pandemic because the pandemic is giving them license to try stuff that they wouldn't normally try. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, can we discuss the teeth? I mean, does anyone want to bring that up? I'm just saying, it, 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 he's more, he's now officially more bite and bark than ever. <laughs> Good point. He's no longer the white knight, but he's got the white teeth. <laughs> he's not the guy. He's not a good guy. He's the bad guy. Well, here's here's one more thing. Um, if they scrap Alexa Bliss out of this, are they slowly feeding her back in? What the hell's going on with that? I think that is awesome. I mean, I know for a long time they've been teasing, like, maybe Alexa Bliss could be Sister Abigail. I like it. I like the whole d dynamic of it. It's just all about execution. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I saw another post that suggested that uh, perhaps they were building toward the, the, the new Wyatt family or whatever the hell they would call it. Um, so maybe they build an actual faction and then the, the fiend and family run roughshod over some stuff, uh, at some point. I, I don't know that you do it necessarily right now with the whole Roman Reigns thing having just transpired, but there's talk that maybe retribution would be their enemy, but it also, also if you've got the hurt business, you could see the, the fiend and his crew ultimately come up against them. There's a lot of long-term plans that WWE may or may not pull the trigger on, but uh, I uh, I am also curious about where they take the Alexa Bliss component of this whole equation. Yeah, those are actually some really good ideas, Then I wouldn't mind seeing that either. Uh, the, the Fiend and his crew against Retribution or the Hurt Business, that's some pretty entertaining stuff, actually. Well, just remember, boys, the one adjective in all of this... That is the most critical execution. Always and forever. Execution? execution? Execution. Shut up. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been saying that for a long time, is that throughout the years there's been a lot of things that are good, but if you don't execute it correctly, it's crap. Or it turns into crap. Which is pretty much everything. Crap. Everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us guys for this edition of the anything wrestling podcast we just reviewed payback let us know what you guys think in the comment section below take care of yourselves and we will see you all next time